Welcome to an overview of Unify NVR. Welcome to NVR and settings of NVR part two. Uh, right now we're going to look a little more into detailed setup of the camera and the fine tuning controls. If I click on the image of my camera here, a nice pop up window uh, comes out on my screen. And from here I can really dig in and fine tune the settings of the camera and I'm going to enlarge this so you can see it a little bit better. First, let's open uh, uh, this wheel that gives us the control of uh, uh, this particular camera. This is not for every camera, this is for each individually. And you have uh, adjustments such as bright brightness, contrast, etc. And you adjust these to suit the particular need of that particular camera. Of course, cameras are deployed uniquely in every single situation, so you have to adjust these accordingly and differently in every single situation. Out of all these settings, this one is my favorite because when you deploy your camera in a, in a peculiar place and uh, your image comes out twisted and crooked, etc., you can of course, flip the, flip the image uh, and uh, have it come out the way it was intended to be. For example, you deploy dome camera on a wall and it's looking down and your image is upside down, etc. So this comes in very handily. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is uh, after I upgrade this and set it up for my customers and later when I revisit to up update the firmware and uh, during the firmware update, it does not keep the settings for orientation. So orientation, for whatever reason, you have to go in and reset again after you update the firmware. So just keep that in mind. And of course, uh, infrared, distortion correction, etc. So again, highly dependent on the area where you place it. If you want to take a quick snapshot of the uh, what are you displaying right now, that's fine. Now this is interesting, okay? There's a lot of people confuse this for recording and uh, for displaying. Why do I like to keep this on a medium or a low level? It's because uh, if I switch to high level, it means it's going to display image also in 1080p on my screen. I already know that it's recording in 1080p, but this is displaying. So if I click in high, the image displays uh, display should be uh, on, on 1080p and if I click on auto it's it should go back to 720p uh, there should be a, a noticeable difference in quality of the image there we go low settings medium settings and high settings and you see the fine details in 1080p are, are much better if you look at the grass here and, and the bushes etc etc but why do I keep it usually in uh, auto settings this doesn't mean that it's recording in in uh, medium settings it's recording in high settings it's recording in 1080p but it's displaying the stream in medium settings why is this useful well when I use my cell phone to view my cameras from afar I mean when I'm outside my home then uh, you know it, it eats up my bandwidth so if I pull up a stream that's 1080p versus a stream that's 720p there's quite a difference in data consumption so for those purposes I like to keep this on on medium and or lower depending on the needs and wants of people but personally for myself I usually keep it on auto, auto which means medium and uh, that's another thing to keep in mind like I said this doesn't mean that it's recording in medium quality, it's recording in high quality, it's recording in 1080p, but it's just displaying the stream in, in medium quality. And that's just for my own personal reasons, because I love, love their app. I love using the app. I use it all the time to check up and to see the motion triggers and whatnot, because I'm always playing around with this and uh, I can 
then transfer this knowledge to my customers first-hand experience microphone uh, microphone volume is just that adjust the slider for example if it's outside and it's always windy if you live in a windy area and you always hear that you can adjust the slider or disable mic again altogether that really digs in to the camera itself and the settings of the camera without going without spending way too much time on it I'm just gonna show you settings of the NVR I've uh, changed the password to all my uh, cameras you can do that from the settings here you can uh, change the password default password from for all your uh, cameras and you should do that immediately if you haven't done so for many reasons uh, and people who don't have any firewalls in their houses and you know uh, and have these cameras exposed to the internet without any protection is a terrible terrible idea so change the default passwords please change the default passwords have it connected to my ubiquity account because i have so many of these to keep track of so and of course uh, you can enable notifications uh, enable, enable motion email alerts for me personally uh, get email notifications from uh, the garage because well if somebody's in, in the garage that means they are inside the house otherwise the uh, my cell phone would be blazing all the time so the only place that i really want to record is in my garage and of course that's because my bike's there and I don't want to lose my bike <laughs> I had my motorcycle stolen once so I don't ever want to do that again so I have it set to uh, send me email notifications from the garage and it works fairly well you know depending on your phone and your provider how fast the emails go through okay and that's a little detailed look into the NVR and the cameras. It is an amazing kit, a closed system, but it's simplified for deployments from residential to small businesses and it can be fairly useful for a fraction of the price of what the big kits like uh, Axis and Radius and others are going for. For the price, um, this is very hard to beat and the quality of materials is also on par if not better than most systems out there so thank you again and um, have a great day